created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look In the town of Bethany, there was a lot of celebrating. But not everyone had heard the wonderful, miraculous news. Excuse me. Uh, pardon me. What's going on? Haven't you heard? A good friend of ours has died. Really? Then why is everyone so happy? Because he has come back to life. That's impossible. That would... <laughs> would be a miracle. I'd sooner believe that my donkey talks. Who is this man? No ordinary man, that's for sure. His name is Jesus, and he's the Son of God. We don't blame you for not believing us. We'd think the same thing if we didn't know Jesus and hadn't seen the miracles ourselves. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm Peter. And I'm Andrew. Come, sit with us. Andrew introduced Jesus to me. I liked him the very first time I met him. Peter told the traveler that a few days after meeting Jesus, they were all invited to a wedding. Even Jesus' mother Mary was there. Halfway through the party, the groom saw that the wine was almost gone. Without wine, there wouldn't be anything to drink, and the party might end early. They have no wine. Is there anything you can do to help? But it's not time to let people know who I am. Okay. Do whatever he tells you to do. Go and fill six empty jars with water. Then pour the water for all the wedding guests. I don't believe it! This is the best wine I've ever tasted! Huh? The groom didn't know where the wine came from. But Andrew and Peter knew. It was Jesus' first miracle. Hmm. That could have been some trick, don't you think? No, it definitely wasn't a trick. We saw it with our own eyes. And that was just the beginning of his miracles. Like the time we were about to fish. Peter explained how Jesus was teaching a large group of people about the kingdom of God. Hello again. Please, no pushing. May I join you? Of course. Let's go out into the water. Jesus spoke to the crowd on shore for a little while longer, then said, Peter, sail out into deeper water and let's fish. 
But Jesus, we fished all night and caught nothing. Maybe so. But now, put your nets into the water and see what you catch. Anything you say, Jesus. Our nets are about to break! <laughs> We're going to need another boat! <laughs> This is fantastic! We have so many fish, we're going to sink! Peter? Andrew? It's time to stop fishing now. What? Come with me, and I'll teach you how to be fishers of men. So Andrew and Peter quit their jobs. They stopped fishing so they could be with Jesus and learn from him. After that, they met James and John, who also joined Jesus. They became Jesus' closest friends and followed him wherever he went to teach people. We were the first of his followers, his disciples. This is James and John. So the boatload of fish was another miracle. That's oh, right. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Jesus had a knack for fishing. I'm a pretty good fisherman myself, you know. Oh, that was just the beginning. There were so many other miracles. Oh, uh, this is Philip and Thomas. There was the time Jesus was teaching inside a friend's house. James told how the house was packed with people who had come to hear Jesus. We'll never get close enough for him to help our sick friend. Hmm, maybe there's more than one way to get inside. So remember, with faith, you can do anything. What are they doing? Away. Go away, do you hear? No, wait. Don't you see how hard they work to get their sick friend inside the house? What's going to happen? All of the bad things you have done in your life no longer matter. I forgive you of your sins. What? Jesus can't forgive this man. Everyone knows that only God can forgive someone who is bad. Who does he think he is? When I say I forgive your sins, there's no way of proving that I've really done anything. True, true. But you will see my power if I heal this man's body, too. Time to get up and walk home. Glory to God! This really is His Son! If Jesus can cure a sick man, then it's true that he can forgive sins too! Look! Jesus has healed me! And then the man and his four friends shouted for joy and sang all the way home. That sounds like a miracle. But maybe the man wasn't really sick, and he just tricked Jesus. What's this? Someone who doesn't believe Jesus' miracles? He thinks they're just tricks. A minute ago, you said you were a pretty good fisherman. Once I caught a camel fish this big. But have you ever been able to make a storm go away? <laughs> no one can do that. 
There was the time when all of us were sailing across a lake. I'm tired and need to rest a little while. Peter, why don't you have more faith? There's no reason to be frightened when I'm with you. It's a miracle. Even the wind and water obey him. I... I don't know what to say. I hardly believe my ears. If only I could see such miracles with my own eyes. I've seen them with my eyes I've seen my friend named Jesus Turn water into wine Seeing is believing Believe in what I see When you look within your heart You'll see what I mean I can almost see the miracles Right before my eyes He fills the nets of fishermen Turns water into wine he feeds the hungry, cures the lame, gives sight to the blind. When I look within my heart, miracles come alive. I believe in miracles. I believe in Jesus. I believe in miracles. The power of God is with us. my doubts far away If only I had seen with my own eyes Sometimes my brother you've got to have faith There is a man in Israel He's doing wondrous things They say he is the Son of God Jesus is his name I believe I believe in Jesus, I believe in miracles, the power of God is with us.
The disciples then told about the day when Jesus was stopped by two blind men. Jesus, please, please heal us. Do you really think I can make you see again? Oh, yes. We've heard all about you. You are the true Son of God. We know you can make us see again. Then what you believe can happen, will happen. Just keep on believing. First, we could only see darkness. Now we can see the light of the world. Oh, what a miracle that must have been. Please, don't stop there. The disciples then explained the more people learned about Jesus, the more they hungered for his teachings. Like the day in Galilee, when he spoke to a crowd of 5,000 people. It was a wonderful day. Almost like a big surprise picnic. Can't everyone go home now so they can get something to eat? But Peter, there is so much more I want to tell them. Philip, where can we buy enough food for all these people? It would take eight months of work to pay for all the food for a crowd this size. Jesus, I've found a boy who has five loaves of bread and two fish. The boy gladly gave Jesus his food. After blessing the food, Jesus gave it to his disciples to hand out. It was just a little bit of food, but it filled every basket they had and kept filling them. And after everyone had eaten, they collected the leftovers and found that there was enough to still fill every basket. Jesus had performed another miracle but the day wasn't over yet. Right after the wonderful picnic, Jesus sent his disciples back across the lake. Don't be afraid. I'm coming to help you. Jesus, is it all right for me to come out to you? Come ahead, Peter. Oh, my, he's actually walk on water? Uh, help me! Jesus, help me! Uh. Why did you doubt me, Peter? Oh, no, look, look! Truly, you are the Son of God. Why did you sink, Peter? Because at that moment I lost my faith. I didn't totally believe in Jesus or what he was doing, but he showed me how. Greetings, Thaddeus. Oh, for such wonderful things to happen, Jesus must truly be the Son of God. But we haven't told you about one of the greatest miracles of all. James told about the time when Jesus heard some very bad news about his friend, Lazarus. Lazarus has died. Oh, how sad. We're sorry, Jesus. Don't be, my friends. He's dead, but I'm going to bring him back to life. When I do, 
It will help you to believe in me. They found Lazarus' sisters waiting in front of the burial tomb. Jesus, I'm sure Lazarus wouldn't have died if you had been there. Martha, anyone who believes in me will live again, even if he has died. Do you believe that? Yes, because I believe you are God's son. Then take away this stone. God, may everyone now see that you have sent me to give life. Lazarus, come out. Jesus must be the Son of God. Then Peter told the traveler about Jesus' most important, most wonderful miracle. It happened three days after his own death. It was on a Sunday when John and Peter went to where Jesus was buried. But he was gone. Jesus came back to life. He then visited his disciples. They first saw him down by the water. What are we supposed to do now? We should become fishermen again. What else can we do? The sea is completely empty. Yes, we fished all night and we haven't caught a thing. Hello. Have you caught any fish? Not even one. Try again. Throw your net over the right side of the boat. Hey, look! It's Jesus! Quick, let's row to shore! You go ahead, I can't wait. Good morning, Peter. Call to the others. Let's have fish for breakfast. In all, Jesus has been here with us for 40 days now, telling us about the kingdom of God. Oh, how wonderful. I only wish that I... Peter, there you are. Oh, hey, let's go. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. I give you my blessings. And now it is time for me to return to heaven so I can be with my Father. Now go out into the world and teach everyone you meet about me. Remember, I'll always be with you through the Holy Spirit. We must leave now, my friend. I and the others are going to Jerusalem to begin our life's work, to tell others like yourself about Jesus. Remember everything that we've told you today and believe in the miracles of Jesus. I believe. I believe. I believe.
Once there was a man named Jacob who lived in the land of Canaan with his 12 sons. The oldest was Reuben, then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. And finally, Benjamin and Joseph. They were Jacob's children by his second wife, Rachel. Being the youngest, they stayed at home while their brothers worked the pastures. Jacob loved all his sons, but Joseph was his favorite. Father, when can I tend the sheep with my brothers? I dreamed it would be any day now. Joseph, you and your dreams. <laughs> you start tomorrow. And to celebrate the big event, I have a surprise for you. Now that he's of age, Joseph will join his older brothers in the fields. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> and this will keep you warm. Oh, Father, it's beautiful. Hey, look at these sleeves and the colors. Father should have given you a coat like that, Reuben. You're the oldest. Huh, in my dreams. Joseph's brothers were jealous of his gift. It reminded them that their father loved him most of all. But the beautiful coat wasn't the only thing that made them angry at Joseph. Judah, Asher, Simeon, the other night I had a wonderful dream. We were all in a field binding bundles of grain. And my bundle stood upright while yours gathered around mine and bowed down. Bowed down? To you? Huh? Father may worship you, but we don't. Hey, it was just a dream, Simeon. I'm going to bed. You know, last night I dreamed I was a star in the sky, along with 11 other stars. The sun and the moon were there too. And <laughs> they all bowed down to me. Eleven stars? You mean eleven brothers. And we're supposed to bow to you? Who do you think you are? A king? Ugh. If we're the stars, who are the moon and sun? His mother and I. Joseph, you don't think your family should actually worship you? Father, it was just a... Get to sleep. You and your brothers leave early in the morning. If you sleep late, they won't wait for you. Father's got that right. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anything more about dreams. <sighs> the next day, Joseph was left behind. Hello? Uh-oh, the dreamers found us. Get ready to bow, my brothers. Look at him, strut around like a peacock in his new coat. Sometimes I wish we could get rid of him. No, you don't. But I do. If he mentions one more dream, Simeon, he's our brother. We couldn't hurt him. But you've given me an idea. <sighs> what were you trying to do? Lose me? Joseph began to tell his brothers how smart he had been to find them, but they weren't listening. They had other plans. Hey, careful with the coat! Reuben, Judah, no! Ah! We'll keep him down there until we figure out what to do next. 
Reuben planned to free Joseph when no one was looking and sent him scurrying home. Oh, no! Reuben and Naphtali rounded up the flock while the others ate their supper. While they ate, a caravan approached. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we sold Joseph to those merchants? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We'd finally be rid of the pest and have money from the sale. Everyone agreed to the terrible plan. And Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Brothers, why are you doing this? God, whatever happens to me, I still have my faith in you. You did what to Joseph? Calm down, Reuben. I'll calm down when you figure out what we're going to tell Father. We have figured it out. We ripped Joseph's coat. We'll just make up some story. We looked everywhere for him, but only found his coat. Oh, Joseph. What has happened to you? My son. The brothers lied, and Jacob believed them. Joseph was taken to Egypt and accused of a crime. He hadn't done anything wrong, but he was thrown into the Pharaoh's prison anyway. Even in prison, Joseph trusted in God. God, I didn't do anything bad, but I'm in here for some reason. I know in my heart that it's all part of your plan. Joseph was right, and part of God's plan was to bless him with a special gift, the ability to understand other people's dreams. Oh, what a terrible night. If I only knew what my dream meant. Ah, my dream was four times as confusing as yours. I can tell you what it means. You understand my dreams? Ha! Not I. Only God can explain them. I believe you. Tell me about my dream. I was Pharaoh's cupbearer until I displeased him. In my dream, I saw a grapevine. On the vine were three branches with grapes. I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. The three vines mean that in three days, Pharaoh will set you free, and you'll be his cupbearer again. Thank you, Joseph. No, thank God, my friend. And when you're free, 
Please tell Pharaoh about me. Tell him I shouldn't be in this awful place. I promise, I promise. Oh, enough about you. I'm next. In my dream, I had three baskets on my head. In the top basket were baked goods for Pharaoh. Suddenly, three birds came and ate everything out of the basket. What's that all about? In three days, you will also leave this prison. I knew it. I'm too important to stay here any longer. Wait, there's more. Everything you own will be taken away, and you will be given Pharaoh's harshest punishment. I'm sorry. Everything Joseph said came true, but the cupbearer forgot to tell Pharaoh about him. Joseph stayed in prison for two long years. Then one day, What a strange dream! Pharaoh met with the wisest men in his kingdom. Maybe they could understand his dream. But not one of them had an answer. Then the cupbearer remembered his promise to Joseph. Oh, Pharaoh, there is a very wise man in your prison who might explain your dream. Joseph, I dreamed that I was standing on the banks of the Nile when seven fat cows came out of the water. Then seven skinny cows came out of the river. And suddenly, the skinny cows ate the fat cows. <laughs> what does it mean? My God is telling you what he plans to do. The seven fat cows mean that there will be seven years with plenty of crops and food for everyone. But the seven skinny cows mean that after that, for seven years, no crops will grow and your people will have no food. Oh, this is horrible, terrible. No, Pharaoh. God has sent you this message so that you can prepare. Build barns to save some of the food that grows in the seven years of plenty. Your people will have plenty to eat. It is true. You are filled with the Spirit of God. This is the wisest man in my kingdom. We'll build these barns and save our food. And there is only one man who I trust to do such an important job, this man, Joseph. Joseph went right to work. And soon the barns were bursting with grain and filled with cattle. But Joseph's greatest achievement was that the people loved him. God had helped Joseph do these wonderful things, and Joseph never forgot to thank him. Seven years later, the terrible drought that Joseph had warned about arrived. No crops grew anywhere not even in Joseph's old home, Canaan. We're out of food, Father. There's a wise leader in Egypt who has stored food for seven years. He's selling it to anyone who needs it. Then we'll go meet with him and buy his grain. Not Benjamin. I want him safe here with me.
Joseph recognized his brothers. Bless you, great one. But they didn't recognize him, so he pretended to be a stranger. Where are you from? Canaan, great one, seeking food for our family. You're spies! No, we're brothers from a family of 12. Please believe me. Liar! There are only 10 of you. One brother was killed, and Benjamin, the youngest, was left at home. Hmm. I'll sell you my grain, but to prove that you are innocent and honest, bring this younger brother of yours the next time you come. I am going to keep one of you here until you return. <gasps> Do you promise? We promise. God is punishing us for selling Joseph into slavery. He pleaded with us, and we betrayed him. <clears throat> I have no more time for you. Take your grain and go. And remember your promise. Father, we had no choice. Oh, Simeon, my son, a prisoner in Egypt. But look, Father, we got the grain. Hey, my money's here in the sack. Now we'll be accused of being thieves as well as spies. Jacob didn't want to lose another son to Egypt. So the family tried to save their food. But soon, it was all gone. We're leaving for Egypt. And we must take Benjamin. No, he'll wind up in prison like Simeon. We promised, Father. If Benjamin doesn't come, Simeon will stay in prison. And the Egyptian ruler won't sell us his grain. Benjamin will come home unharmed. I promise. If he doesn't, Judah, I'll die of sadness. Is your father well? Yes, sir. Good. God has blessed you. And you kept your promise, so I'll keep mine. Then the brothers left, but Joseph had told his servant to secretly place his silver cup in one of their sacks. Stop! Why do you repay good with evil? One of you has stolen my silver cup! What does that? No, I couldn't. For this crime, you will remain here in Egypt as my slave. Oh, no. No. Is he no. Is he Please, if Benjamin doesn't return home with us, our father will die of grief. He stays. No, no! Take me instead! No, me. Please, great one. When you threw me down that well, you meant it to be a bad thing. But in the end, God has turned it into something good. I came to Egypt, 
and helped keep a nation from starving. It's me, Benjamin! Joseph! It's true I'm Joseph Oh, can't you tell it's me? Look closer and you'll see The eyes of your lost brother I am so glad to have my family gathered here It's so good to know you're near Gather your families and our father and come live with me in Egypt. Joseph, God be praised. You're alive and well. Joseph and his family were never apart again. And God, who helped them survive the famine, raised up a great nation from this family. So Joseph learned that even when bad things happen, God can turn them into something good. Long ago, word spread throughout the land of a wonderful teacher in Jerusalem. It was Jesus, the Son of God. He helped people who were sick.
and encourage those who were lonely. He answered their questions and told them about God. Jesus traveled from place to place, and wherever he went, people wanted to hear what he had to say. <laughs> you know, the angels of children are always very close to God in heaven. my baby pray for my child no go away one of Jesus's disciples was upset can't you see Jesus is too busy to waste his time on children wait my father's kingdom is made up of people who trust and love like children do to God every child is a special treasure as my disciple you should know I could never turn children away I'm sorry, Jesus. Here. Please, come back. I was wrong. Jesus will bless your children. Jesus was never too busy for anyone, young or old, sick or well. <laughs> Teacher! If you really know all the answers, tell me. How can I get into heaven? You've studied God's law. What do you think? Well, it says to love God with all my heart and mind and strength. And I should love my neighbors and other people as much as I love myself. That's right. But wait, I understand everything but that last part. Who are my neighbors? And how do I love others? So, what's your answer, Jesus? There's the story of a young man. He left Jerusalem on a trip to Jericho. The young man checked his money carefully, as his father had always told him to. and then began his journey. Morning. Good morning. Along the way, the man greeted other travelers, including a priest from the temple. Have a safe journey. And you also. As his journey continued, he came upon another traveler. A Levite. Levites help the priests in the temple. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Good journey to you. And to you. As time passed, the traveler saw fewer and fewer people on the road. <laughs> so I'm not alone. What a beautiful bird. I remember seeing such a bird once. Oh, 
Oh, Papa! Can we look at the birds? <laughs> we always do, son. Ah! Ah! Oh, Papa, don't you just love the birds? Love the birds! Ah! Love the birds! Come on, your mother sent us to buy almonds for our dinner. down the street from us, don't they? Yes, they're our neighbors. They're good people. Oh, Papa, look! <laughs> Who's that man? Him? He's not from Jerusalem. He's from Samaria. That's a Samaritan? Stay here, son. The Samaritans are not like our neighbors. They are our enemies and can't be trusted. The boy was taught to fear anyone from a different place. Always remember, beware of the Samaritans. Beware of the Samaritans. The traveler was completely alone on the road when a stranger approached. He was frightened because his father had always warned him to be afraid of people from other places. But the foreigner did not bother him. Greetings, little fellow. Here's a treat for you. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't see you. Good day, stranger. How are you? Hello. Are you from Jerusalem? That's a relief. It's good to see neighbors so far from home. Ow! You have a firm grip, friend. You haven't felt anything yet. <gasps> Grab him! W w what are you doing? Please stop! We're neighbors! So give us all your money, neighbor. <laughs> Let's get out of here! The thieves took the traveler's money and jewelry, and they almost took his life. No one could hear his cries for help, so he tried to crawl back to the road. Oh, oh, I know you'd help me if you could, little friend. 
the poor traveler lay in the ditch for hours. Someone's coming. How fortunate. It's the priest. He'll help me. But I'm so, so tired. The traveler needed help, but he was too weak to call out. What's this? Oh my goodness! Someone should help this poor man. The priest passed the traveler on the opposite side of the road. Where did he go? priest before him, the Levite passed on the other side of the road. What will I do? What will I do? Isn't there anyone who will help me? By late afternoon, the poor traveler had grown very weak. Hello, little friend. I'm afraid I, I won't make it through the night. Tell me, God, where are my neighbors now that I need them? At sunset, another traveler came down the road. Someone's coming. Always remember, beware of the Samaritans. Just when I need help the most, along comes a Samaritan. Maybe he hasn't seen me. Is it?
This is medicine for your cuts and scrapes. Now, this should help. I don't understand. I'm going to take you to a safe place tonight. But why? You're a Samaritan. Ah, then you have met my people before. Travelers passing by couldn't believe their eyes. A Samaritan was helping an Israelite. Don't talk. Save your strength for our journey ahead. I hope this doesn't hurt too much. The Samaritan led his donkey to a small inn. Was there an accident? Is he all right? No, we must get him inside. Of course. Yes, I s I saw him too. But who is that with him? Why, it's a Samaritan! But a Samaritan wouldn't help an Israelite. Would he? Just rest now. Thank you. All night, the Samaritan cared for the injured man. He's looking much better. I must travel on business today. Take this money and pay for anything he needs until I get back. When I return, I'll pay you for any other expenses. I can't thank you enough. I'll see you in a few days. I asked God where my neighbors were when I needed them. He has given me the answer. And the Samaritan did as he promised. A few days later, he took the traveler back to Jerusalem.
neighbor, hand in hand we go. Hand in hand we go. Helping strangers we may meet along the winding road. Who's my neighbor? You are my neighbor. I can clearly see that a neighbor is a friend reaching out to me. When you look with your heart instead of your eyes, the neighbor you find. Surprise! Look for a neighbor. He will be the one. Hand in hand we go. Always standing by your side when the day is done. Look for a neighbor. He will be the one. Always standing by your side when the day. So tell me, which man was the neighbor to the traveler? The priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? Well, that's easy. The one who cared for him. As we should all do, showing kindness to everyone. So don't just love the people in your family or your friends. Love everybody, especially those in need. Live your life like the Good Samaritan. I will, Jesus. Let me help you, young neighbor. The story Jesus told that day spread throughout the world. And now, a person who helps someone in need is called a Good Samaritan.